And, uh, and I'd just like to actually point out exactly what actually happened. It was the second test match, Sri Lanka versus South Africa, the final day. Sri Lanka needed 340 runs, South Africa needed 10 wickets. I went downstairs onto the ground, as I do as commentating, looking at the pitch, huge foot, um, spike marks, bowler's foot marks, and I was picking to Nicky, uh, Nicky Bayo, who's the left arm spinner, who, what we call Lamb and I would say, he bowls men's gallery balls, like Ashley Joss. He puts nothing on him. And, uh, and I said, look, mate, you've just got to bowl six balls in a row, and natural variation out of the holes will get your wicket. So he said, yeah, you know, good point. And I said, just be boring. You don't have to fly it. Just zero in there, and sooner or later you'll get blokes out. Yeah, OK. Well, sure enough, Sri Lanka got off to a roll. They were two for 150, and Jaya Surya was smashing him. He was on 70. Well, in, oh, I'm saying it's big, about time Nicky Bayo come on to bowl. Well, sure enough, he come on. Thank Christ for that, because obviously Graham Smith was listening to the commentary. So, <laughs> he's come and bowled the first ball, and he bowled it, and it's hit the bowler's foot marks, and it's kicked and bounced and hit um, Joe Stewart in the gloves, and it fell short of the guy with the beard in the helmet, Hashim Mamla, who many of the team players call our resident ter a terrorist. So, I didn't know his nickname was that, and all I said, beautifully bowled. He's terrorising. Joe Surya, outside of stuff. Look at his head replay, replay, and I got a director to zoom in on the pitch, and I, I was doing a better telestrator than Tony Gregg. I had the arrows going in the right way, and everything's <laughs> working beautifully. And I said, that's where he's got a bowl. Well, the next ball is folded in there, it's kicked and bounced, and it's hit him in the bum, Joe Surya in the bum, and it's fallen short of the guy's beard and the helmet, Hashim Amla. And again, I said, he terrorised him outside off stuff. He doesn't know which way he's going, because look at his head, it's up in the air, he doesn't want to face it. Beautifully bowled. Well, the next delivery bowl, that's halfway down the pitch, it was just shithouse delivery, and it was so bad, Joe Suri hit it into India. And it's a pretty big hit, that's sort of 98 kilometres away. So, and I said, that's why he averages 40 odd. He's an average bowler, he's got to bowl six balls in that area, and he'll get guys out. Well, the next ball he's bowled it straight into the area in the zone. It's hit him in the gloves. Hashim Mamma, the guy with the beard and the helmet, is dived forward and taking a great catch. And I've called it great catch to Wamla. Joe, Joe Suri goes, replay, replay, replay. Now Joe Suri goes to 73 or 76. And now Sri Lanka are in a bit of trouble. Three for 156. I put down the microphone and I turned around knowing when we say three for 156, everyone in the world goes to a break. So I've actually said three for one five six and I've turned around and I've gone to get my cup of tea and I've gone, finally the terrorist has got a wicket. Now everyone went to a break except South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> well there's phone calls coming in and oh sh did the shit at the fan within three hours I was sacked and sent home in disgrace. And I'm about to hop, hop on the flight at, uh, at, at, at uh, Colombo to come home, and I'm thinking, oh, I'm in a lot of trouble here, I know that. And I'm thinking, what's going to happen? My phone rings, and I answer it, and it was Richard Hadley. Now, can you imagine him ringing me up, you know? Did you know that actually he got me out three times in his career? He knocked me over three times. Buckingham Palace heard about it and they nodded him. So that's a pretty good answer. So, <laughs> and he's my only test wicket too, I might add. That's pretty good. So he said to me, you stupid Aussie bugger, what have you done? I said, well, I'm in a bit of trouble here. He said, look, I didn't understand your Aussie slang. You didn't say terrorist, you said tourist, didn't you? And I'm like, well, where were you three hours ago? He said, oh, terrific, tourist, it's a tourist. Well, I'm thinking, I hopped on the plane, I'm thinking, Jesus, I hope Colin will have a, have a story for the Herald Sun tomorrow, because I'm front page at the moment. So, <laughs> so I went home, and sure enough, I, I, I got nailed really badly. Three weeks, uh, over the next three weeks after that, I got badly nailed in the press from people, more importantly my kids, got nailed by their teacher, calling that your dad's a racist and terrorist and all this type of stuff, and they meant it, so I had to sort them out, there was a lot of trouble. But if you guys said to me this, Dino, I've got a career opportunity for you. I want you to say, finally, the terrorist got a wicket. <laughs> now, what, the shit's going to have to hit the fan for a while, you're going to get sacked, you're going to send home in disgrace, but what's going to happen?
is that three weeks are going to be a lot of stuff going on. But the fourth week, the ICC Championships are going to come along. And you're going to get hired again by two companies and you're going to double your fee. I'd be thinking you're on drugs. Well, that's what's bloody happened. So I was just going to do it and there you go. The funny thing about it is, no matter how much spin doctrine goes on, finally the terrorists got a wicket. I was never ever referring to the guy with the beard. I was always referring to Nicky Boyo because if I referred to the guy with the beard, Hashim Amla, I would have said finally the terrorist got a cash because he didn't get a wicket. But no matter how much spin doctoring I was going to do, I wasn't going to get out of it. So there you go. So that's how things go. Um, I was in work, 